Welcome to ECLEMU Learning Simplified and welcome to our new topic Equilibrium and Center of Gravity. This topic is greatly related to what we discussed in the previous topic, the turning effect of a force, where we discussed turning effect of a force as the product of a force and the perpendicular distance from the point of support. We also discussed the principle of moment which states that for a body in equilibrium, the sum of clockwise moments must balance out or must be equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment. In this topic, we are going to discuss equilibrium, that is a state of balance of a body, and then we are going to discuss the center of gravity, where we are going to realize for a body to balance out, it must be balanced at what we call the center of gravity, where the weight of the object acts. Now, in this lesson specifically, we are going to discuss the center of gravity. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define center of gravity, then describe how we can determine the center of gravity of a meter rule, then finally, discuss few examples concerning the center of gravity of a meter rule. So the center of gravity, which sometimes we call the COG, is a very crucial concept in physics and engineering in general because it represents a theoretical point within which an object is weight act. And I want to give two scenarios here. If you have your ground like this, then you have a pivot at this point here. Then you bring a uniform bar and you place it on this pivot like that, such that much of this load is on the right hand side. What you are going to realize, the clockwise moments will be larger than the anticlockwise moment, so this rod will fall on or in the clockwise direction like that. But if you have the same same rod on the same same ground, then you have a pivot at the middle. What you will realize if you place a pivot at the middle of this rod, then the clockwise moments and the anticlockwise moments will balance out and this object will balance on that pivot. So in this case, where this object balances out, that's what we are going to call the COG and we are going to discuss more about that. However, not all objects that will balance out at the middle because imagine you have a log, a very thick log like this. If you try to put a pivot at the middle of this log, what you will realize to the left, this is the pivot, to the left hand side that this log is very large. Therefore, much of the mass, if you cut this rod like this, much of the mass lies on the left hand side. So if much, much of the mass is concentrated on the left-hand side, this log is going to fall in anticlockwise direction. So for you to balance this log out, then you have to adjust this pivot in a way that now it is at a point where mass to the left-hand side is equal to the mass to the right-hand side. And in that point, that's what we are going to call the COG, a point where the mass of an object balances out in the clockwise direction and in the anticlockwise direction. Now, this concept is very important because it helps us to predict how moving bodies behave when they are acted by gravity, especially buses. And this idea is largely used by engineers, especially in construction of buildings and bridges. Center of gravity can be defined in two ways. And the first way in which we can define center of gravity is that it's a point of application of the resultant force due to the attraction of the earth. Sometimes we can define it as a point where the whole weight of a body appears to act. And this whole weight of a body or the weight of a body can be calculated using the formula that we introduced in Form 1. Weight is equal to mass times the gravitational field strength, which is equal to 9.8 to one newton per kg. If we round it off, the g will be equals to 10 newton per kg. So in this case, if you have a body which is balanced out, like in this case, 
at the point where we have the COG, if this is the point where we have the COG, that is the center of gravity, we have said at this point, that is where the weight of this rod will act. So if this rod by chance is two kilogram, then this V4 will receive an action force or the weight, which is equals to mass times gravity, which is in this case is two kg times the gravitational field strength, which is 10 newtons per kg. So in this case, if kg cancel out with that kg, then we will remain with our answer as weight is equal to two times 10, which is 20 newton. So this 20 newton will be acting at this point where we have the center of gravity. Now, by chance, if you change the position of that pivot, the center of gravity will still uh, remain at that point where you had the initial pivot. So in this case, if you introduce a pivot towards the left hand side, at the middle here, we will still have our COG. This is the COG will remain at that point. Then here we will have our 20 Newton acting at that point. Therefore, the clockwise moments will be favored. So for you to balance out this rule, then you must introduce some force on this side here, which will make this rule to balance out. But otherwise, if there will be no uh, weight or force on the left-hand side, this rule will lean or will return to the uh, right-hand side that will cause a clockwise moment. So we are going to begin with the determination of the center of gravity of a meter roll and uniform rods. And if you understand this concept of determining the center of gravity of a meter roll and uniform rods, then it will be very easy for you to understand the concept of determining the center of gravity of other bo bodies and shapes. And in this case, we are even going to determine the center of gravity of even asymmetrical objects. So a meter rule, which is a uniform rod, can be thought of having made up of very numerous tiny particles of wood and each having a very small force acting on it. Remember what we discussed from particular nature of matter? We said matter is made up of very tiny particles which in solids are in contact with each other. And therefore, if they are in contact with each other, all these particles, since they are matter, then they will have some mass. And if they have some mass, then it means they can be, they are able to exert some weight. Since we said for, for you to determine weight, then you multiply mass times the gravitational field strength. So what you will realize each of these particles, let's say W1, this one will have W2, weight 3, weight 4, and then we have weight 5. Then on the other side, we will have weight 1, weight 2, weight 3, weight 4, and we have weight 5. So in this case, a meter rule is made up of very tiny wood, and each of these hood is uniform, and they have some mass which can exert some weight on this rule. And what we, we are going to realize then is that this meter rule can only balance out at a very specific point, where the turning effect of the gravitational force acts on it balances. And in this case, we are going to realize that it balances at 50 centimeter mark, since the, the particles making this rule are uniform. Uniform in a way that the mass of each particle is equal to the mass of another particle. Therefore, in this case, if we have five weights on the left hand side, then we have five weights on the right hand side, then it means if you balance it at 50, that is the center of a meter. Remember, when we talk about a meter rule, we, talk, we are talking about a rule which is 100 centimeter or one meter long. So in this case, if it's one meter long, then it will balance at 0 0.5 a meter or 50 centimeter mark. And if you want to try this in the lab, then you will take a knife or even a razor blade. If you take a razor blade and then you fix it at a point, remember a razor blade is very thin, then this is the thinnest part of that laser blade, then take a meter rule and place it at the edge of that laser blade like that. If you place it carefully at a 50 centimeter mark, what you will realize it will balance out in such a way that we say it's at equilibrium, it's at a state of balance where the clockwise moments 
are equals to the anticlockwise moments. So let's handle a question. A uniform half meter. Half meter is very important. This means it's 50.0 centimeter. Rod is balanced by a weight of 38 newtons at one end. If a pivot is placed 10 centimeters from the same end, it means where you have 38 newton, close to that end is where we have a pivot which is 10 centimeters away from this weight of 38 newtons. So calculate the weight of the rod. So what you do here first, you sketch. You sketch the diagram where you have a uniform rod like that and it ranges from 0 to 50.0 centimeter. Then now in this case, on one end, that means it at 0, we have a weight of 38 newton. And then 10 centimeters from this end, that is 10 centimeters, we have a pivot. This is what we have, this where we have a pivot. Then now, then the question is asking, calculate the weight of the rod. What you need to do here is that you should know this rod has a, a center of gravity or the COG at the half. This, this, since this one is uniform, then at its middle, that is where the center of gravity acts. So in this case, at 25 centimeters, that's where we have the COG. COG. And at COG, that is the weight. That is where the weight of that rod will act. So if this, one, if this rule is balanced out, because here it is balanced by, if it is balanced out, then it means the clockwise moment, clockwise moment is equal to the anticlockwise moment. And in this case, the clockwise moment that we have will be the distance from the pivot to the weight. That is where we'll have our first clockwise moment. In this case, 25 minus 10, our D1 is going to be 15 centimeter. Then the other distance or the, the other moment that we have here is anticlockwise moment. That is from the force of that 8 newtons to the pivot, that is 10. So the distance here, D2, is equals to 10 centimeter. So in this case now, if we write D1, uh, F1, D1, is equals to F2, D2. F1 for clockwise moment is W. So W times D1, D1 in this case is 15 centimeter, 15 centimeter is equals to F2, this is our F2, that is the weight of that 8, that is that 8 newton, times D2, D2 in this case is 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter. So in this case, if we need to get the weight of this rod, then now we will divide by 15 centimeter on both sides so that we remain with W on the left hand side. So we will divide by 15 centimeter like that. Then in this case, we will end up with weight is equals to 38 newton times 10 centimeter divided by 15 centimeter. And in this case, centimeter and centimeter will cancel out. Then the units that we will remain with will be uh, newton. And then in this case, 38 times 10 will be 380 newton divided by 15. Uh, and in this case, this will be our weight, uh, which we can get as, as weight is equals to 25.33 Newton. Remember, we always write physics answers into four significant figure. This is the first, second, third, and fourth. So the weight of this meter roll is 25.33 Newton, and you can confirm that by now replacing this weight here on this equation. What you will realize the clockwise moment or the answer you will get on the left hand side will be equal to the answer you will get on the right hand side. Another question a uniform meter rule. Uniform here is very important and it's key because it means it, its weight is evenly distributed within its dimension. And then another thing here is a meter rule. It means it's 100 centimeter long. Pivoted at 15 centimeter, this is where we have a pivot. From zero at 15, we have a pivot. It's balanced by a mass of 200 grams 
are suspended at 5 cm. So this mass is suspended at 5 cm. Then determine the weight of the meter rule. So in this case, what we do, we first sketch what, what we have read from the question for interpretation. Then in this case, we will have our uniform meter rule like that. Let's say this is our uniform meter rule. And then at uh, 15, this way we have 15. At 15, we have a pivot. And then at 2, at uh, 5 centimeter, at 5 centimeter here, this recipe is 5 centimeter, we have a mass of 200 grams. Then now they are asking, determine the weight of the meter rule. Remember this a meter rule, it's 100 centimeter. Then the weight of this meter rule will act at the COG, that is at 50, at 50 centimeter mark, that is the where we have the COG. So at COG, that is where the weight of this meter rule will act. So in this case, if they want us to determine the weight of this meter rule, then we are going to convert these 200 grams to newtons. It will be our force. And then the distance to the pivot here, it will be 15 minus 5, which will be 10 centimeter. And then from the pivot to the middle or to the COG of this rule, we will have a distance of 50 minus 15 this will be 35 centimeter. And now here we will apply the principle of moment, which says clockwise moment is equals to the anticlockwise moment. And in this case, our clockwise moment that we have is due to this weight. So the clockwise moment will be weight. In this case, let's use that formula first. That is D1, F1, D1 is equals to F2, D2. And in this case, our F1 is equals to weight. This is the same as F1. And then this mass, if we convert it to force, it will be our F2. Then in this case, if we write down or we replace this one, then we are going to get W times the distance to the pivot is 35 centimeter. is equals to 200. You divide by 1,000. That is, you are converting it to SI unit, that is kg. Then you multiply by 10, that is um, the gravitational field strength. That is, will be our weight. Then after this, then you multiply with the distance from the pivot, that is 10 centimeter. So in this case, if we solve on the left-hand side, it will be weight times 35 centimeter is going to be equal to 200 divided by 1000, that is 0 0.2. Then times 10, it will be 2 newton. Then times 10 centimeter. And in this case, if we want to get the weight, then we will have weight is equal to, we take this the other side by dividing on both sides by 35, by 35 centimeter, centimeter. Then in this case, it's going to be weight is equals to 2 newton times 10 centimeter divided by that 5 centimeter. And in this case, if centimeter cancel out with centimeter, then now our weight is going to be 20 newton divided by that 5, which is going to give us weight is equal to, equals to 0 0.575 or 414. That will be the weight of this meter rule in newtons. So this meter rule, its weight at this point where we have the COG is equal to 0 0.5714 newton. And if you want to test that, then you will take this weight and fit it here. And what you are going to realize that what you get on the left hand side will be equal to what you get on the right hand side. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss how to determine the center of gravity of different symmetrical or regular shapes.